What about the bandages around your head then? I was trying to kill myself by slamming my head into the corner of the... Of... I was trying to kill myself by slamming my head into the corner of a block of tofu. You hurt yourself on a block of tofu? You must have been in desperate need of some calcium. I love you, Oda. <laughs> Everything about the place was spotless, without even so much as a single fingerprint of speck uh, or speck of dust. From the lobby, which felt like something out of a luxury European hotel, to the time machine like elevator itself. This office was located in prime real estate. <laughs> it's very real estate. <laughs> Boss, it's me, Oda. I'm coming in. Come on, Elise, put on the dress, just for a little bit. Just for a quick second. What I heard coming from the inside the room was disturbing. I waited three seconds, pretending I didn't hear anything. Then I took a few deep breaths. <laughs> this is so, it's, it's, it's so wonderful having the thoughts of um the, the the character in in a novel that you usually don't get to see like what he's thinking behind the door before coming in um in contrast of the anime <laughs> oh this is wonderful <laughs> uh. <clears throat> daze once said to me odasuku has no ulterior motives what you see is what you get it takes some getting used to, but once you do, it's like a bomb for the soul. I kind of see what he means now. That was the first I'd ever heard of such a thing. This was Dazai, though. He was probably just talking out of his ass. A man in his twenties isn't going to be much of a bomb for anyone's soul. <laughs> oh, oh, phrasing. Oh, schön. <laughs> I decided to go with his su suggestion. The floor above the restaurant used to be an old conference space until it was remodeled for residential use. I climbed up the stairs. The concrete walls were pasted with stained wallpaper and had reinforcing rods sticking out here and there. When I reached the top, I saw two doors. One to the kids' room and one to the stock room. I chose the former. Yo, how have you been? I greeted the kids. Each one focused intently on passing time in various ways. Reading picture books, drawing, throwing a soft, fist-sized ball against the wall, playing cat's cradle. The youngest of the bunch was a four-year-old girl, and the oldest was a nine-year-old boy. Nobody looked up. You guys aren't causing too much trouble for Pops, right? He's ex-military, really tough. So if you guys complain too much, he's gonna... I was teasing the kids when I noticed something. There were supposed to be five of them, but I saw only four. I sensed something before in the bunk bed on the right. I instantly dropped my hips, lowering my posture. A nimble figure leaped out from the shadows on the bed, the fifth kid. I ducked my head and dodged him. However, he was just a decoy. The little girl who'd been drawing latched onto my right leg as I was caught off balance. It was their plan from the start. I lifted my one free leg to step forward in preparation for the real attack that was about to come, but I couldn't move. The string that was being used for a cat's cradle up until a second ago was now drawn right across my path of movement. It was a trap. Manka got caught on the thick, taut string and I lost my footing, causing me to flounder uselessly in midair. I grabbed onto the bunk bed with my right hand and avoided falling to the floor, but the kids had pre predicted that outcome too. They had called in the bed's handrails with crayons until they were slick, and my right hand slid off. Both of my hands hit the floor. I instinctively tried to get back up, but unfortunately for me, I'd left my back momentarily wide open to the kitty gang. There was no way they would let this opportunity go by. I could feel the seven and eight year old boys lunging at me from behind. If I let them get me now, I'd soon be no different from a prisoner marching to the guillotine. I could see it. 
I needed to teach him just how frightening the real Mafia was. <laughs> Es ist so niedlich. Oh mein Gott. Ah. <lacht> oh. Oh. <lacht> es ist niedlich. Oh. I swiftly knocked the <coughs> I swiftly knocked the ball rolling by my side with the back of my hand, bouncing off the wall and hitting the seven year old right in the face. <lacht> Swiftly knocked the ball rolling by my side with the back of my hand, bouncing it off the wall and hitting the seven year old right in the face. Unable to see his target anymore, he landed on the floor and took cover. Next, I pulled my ankle free, tearing the string trap apart before putting my weight on my left leg. When I lifted my right leg high into the air, the kid latched onto it, squealed with joy, and dropped to the floor. All that was left was the eight year old lunging at me from behind. But he alone wouldn't be able to hold me down. I stood up with hanging onto my back. The agile kid, the one who'd been hiding in the bed, was the gang's leader. Even after witnessing the unsighted defeat of his men, he still boldly went for the attack. Since this was his plan all along, he couldn't back, he couldn't back down no matter how obviously hopeless this was. It's viel zu niedlich! <laughs> I caught, <clears throat> I caught the leader as he tried to charge me head on. He made an admirable attempt to grab my legs and knock me off balance. But there was just too much of a weight difference. Seizing him under the arms, I lifted him up, turning him upside down and shook him. He bleated like a goat with a hangover. <laughs> Give up? I asked. Never! He screamed. With no will to fight, the others simply watched to see how much longer their leader could maintain his dignity as commander-in-chief. Then it looks like some mafia-style torture is in order. With both hands under his armpits, I tickled the kid as if there were no tomorrow. <laughs> it took two minutes and 42 seconds before he agreed to my terms of surrender. Ah! Oh, I can't. <laughs> <clears throat> In the corner of this demon city was an underground casino run by the part mafia. It was neither glamorous nor luxurious, but instead rather plain and ambiguous. It basically blended into the scenery. At least, that was how it appeared. But there was a reason for that. All the gambling done inside was illegal. The casino was located beneath a shipyard and had a horde of mafia guards on patrol. Patrons who visited were top-class financiers, politician, politician. Patrons who visited were top-class financiers, politicians, Poli politicians. Ah, goddammit! Right. <laughs> My skill, flawless, allowed me to see a few seconds. More than five, but s less than six, into the future in my hand. Uh, <laughs> in my hand. Ooh. <laughs> into the future in my head. My bullet struck the animal's pistol, knocking it into the ground. Into. <laughs> <laughs> I promptly gave up on trying to neutralize the enemy and searched for any mafia members that were still alive. Most of them already had perished. Most of them had already perished, but there was a boy in a black overcoat who was still conscious. Ryonosuke Kutagawa, I believe his name was. We're getting out of here. What do you think you're doing? He resisted, but I hoisted him up on my shoulder and made a dash for an exit route. A Kutagawa was as light as a tree branch. <laughs> oh, schön. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Akutagawa groaned in pain as his wound opened, but I was in no position to comfort him at that moment. I ran away as quickly as I could while firing warning shots at the enemy. Then, right as they took over, I broke for the man-made forest. While I heard orders being yelled behind me to pursue, I sprinted through the artificial forest of sparsely planted larches. 
oh, it's a beautiful thing, Oda, Oda's side of this. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> As I shot my pistol at Dakotagawa, he sliced the space before him with a black fabric he had apparently been storing by his side. The bullet then sank into the cut space and stopped. However, I already knew about his defense mechanism, so I used that opening to slide to his side and kick his injured arm with everything I had. Yeah. The excruciating pain forced Akutagawa to writhe and fall unconscious. He was already mentally drained from using his skill over and over again, and from guarding multiple times with a technique he wasn't yet accustomed to using. The kick to the gunshot wound was enough to send him over the bridge. Oh. <laughs> The kick to the gunshot wound was enough to send him over the edge. He had striking features. If he were wearing a fancy suit with a glass of wine in hand, I could see him being an actor in a movie. <laughs> uh, description, I love it. <laughs> However, there was a certain quality to the timbre of his voice that sounded like something from decades past. Well, I know this guy who works at a funeral home. I'm sure he'll give you a discount if I put in a word for you. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I love how dry Oda is. <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh. Uh, Oda, best boy. I want to be a novelist, I continued. I want to throw away my gun. All I want in my hands are a pen and paper. A certain man once told me that killing novels... <laughs> the killing novels, whoops. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Daza contacted me and asked if I could meet him to discuss our plans going forward. I grabbed my coat and left my room. I like the night, Daza said. Night time is the mafia's time. The two of us took a walk through downtown Yokohama. The city residents were calmly roaming the streets, building all the new e equally bathed in the moist sea breeze. The golden stars in the sky flickered just like the lights on the earth's surface. Where are we going now? To meet someone, as I smiled. Anyway, I feel for you, Odasaku. Not only did you run into the enemy's boss, but he made some serious advances toward you too. At this rate, you guys will be married by the weekend. <laughs> Ango, it's been a while. Thanks for inviting me. How have been how have things been since returning to your real job? A man with slick back black hair and a white coat, the port mafia boss, Ogai Mori, spoke to Ango in a friendly manner. Without saying a word, Ango simply lowered his gaze nervously. I would appreciate it if you didn't pick on my youngster here, Mafia leader. Sitting on Ango's other side was a tall, middle-aged man with white hair who towered over the rest of the people on the boat. He was Chief Taneda, the commander-in-chief of the Home Affairs Ministry Special Division for Unusual Powers. Wir haben auch Chief Taneda ganz schön abgeändert. <laughs> Oder lese ich das jetzt falsch? Uh, with white hair, Chief Taneda. Das war doch dieser, dieser uh, etwas korpulentere Dude ohne Haare, hä? <laughs> also jedenfalls im Anime. <laughs> Würde mich doch arg wundern, wenn er so, so anders aussieht, hä? <laughs> anyway, müsste er sein. 